Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to briefly introduce CCXT. I'm going to show you some basic functionalities. In the end, I'm going to do some surface scratching on arbitrage possibilities using this library. First of all, what is CCXT? It is a JS, Python, PHP library for cryptocurrency trading and is intended to be used by coders, developers, data scientists and so on for building trading algorithms. So a good use case for this channel. Let's get started with installing the library and that's straightforward. You're just using pip install ccxt, let the installation run and afterwards import the library. And I'm also going to import pandas for data handling. So first of all, we want to take a look at what exchanges are covered by CCXC. We can just do that by taking a look at the exchanges. And as you see, these exchanges are covered. So let's get that in some fewer lines here. So you see Alpaca, Binance, Binance US, uh, Coinbase, right? So all big cryptocurrency exchanges are covered here. Finally, uh, FTX isn't covered anymore for obviously very good reasons. Anyhow, next we want to pull information for one of those uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. So you can pull market information for all those covered exchanges here, right? And that's pretty handy because otherwise you will need to, yeah, learn to use every single API for all those uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. And with CCXT, you just need CCXT and can connect to all those uh, cryptocurrency exchanges. So let's pull some information from an exchange and I'm going to start with Binance and I'm going to just store that in a variable which I'm calling Binance and use CCXT Binance and now I can use this to extract market information from Binance. And to get general market information, I can use uh, load markets here and store that in market Binance. Problem with this will be when I'm printing that out, my kernel will be very slow because the output is quite big as there are a lot of uh, symbols traded on Binance and each symbol is containing information. So I'm just going to show you the first element of this dictionary. So I'm doing a typecast to list here. and then just screen for the first element here, just to see that you see how the structure of the dictionary is looking like. Of course, take the items of the dictionary and not the dictionary itself. And as you see, you have a key, which is your pair, right? ETH BTC here in this case, and then you have values, which are market information. So for example, base, which is uh, the base asset and then the quote asset is BTC. So if you want to get the only the cryptocurrencies in relation to USDT, you would need to screen for those assets having a quote of USDT here. We will do that in some seconds. So for now, just that you understand how this dictionary is looking like, right? So you have a ton of um, pairs here and then all these Kind of information so you can take a look at that for yourself just some uh, important or key information i want to go through with you so we covered that base and quote then we have active very important if that asset is actually trading in the moment then the type of course this is spot and here you have a boolean spot and then if it's a swap future option margin trading possible um yeah, these, these are more uh, derivative information. But important here is, and I've covered that in one of my bot videos, very important for you if you are designing bots and work with limit orders, you have the minimum lot size, which you can extract here, right? This is very important. So just to give you an example, if you code a, an algorithm trading limit orders, you have to provide a quantity and the quantity is um, 
they are dependent on the current price of the asset usually. And when you have a certain price and you want to trade a certain quantity, you have to calculate the quantity you can buy with a certain amount or sell, um, which is equivalent to a certain amount. And you have to fulfill the minimum lot size here. And you don't want that your script is crashing because you provide a wrong lot size, right? I will link a video where I have that as a, as a use case, right? So take a look at those information here uh, for yourself. But this is how the dictionary is looking like. Now let's move on to filtering this market Binance dictionary for only those assets which are in relation to the USDT. Because right now, so if I'm taking a look at the keys of this dictionary, you will see that I'm getting all pairs here, right? ETH, BTC, LTC, BTC, and so on, right? So these are all uh, pairs which you can trade on Binance. So if you are taking a look at the length of this, uh, you're getting 2.1K roughly bin uh, symbols you can trade on Binance, which is quite, uh, yeah, maybe not impressive, but quite remarkable here, right? Oh, also impressive, of course. So a lot of symbols, but you might only be interested in those symbols which are in relation to the USDT. So we could just work with the list comprehension here and store that in a variable symbols and then just check item for item in market Binance if the item ends with USDT. Because you see that the symbols are always ending with the quote um, asset here. So you can, you can do it like so. You can also screen the dictionary for those values where the quote is USDT also possible, right? So symbols and with that I'm getting a list of the symbols in relation to the USDT here, right? So you can actually trade uh, more than 400 symbols here, right? Just as a side note, here are also leverage coins like BTC down uh, in ETH up, but also uh, Forex uh, equivalents, right? So somewhere here has to be Euro in relation to the USDT or other currencies. So you will need to do some more data filtering to this list here, right? Just as a side note. Anyhow, just um, just a further hint, if you want to have a look into the market information on Binance and you don't want to do all these filterings here, you can still work with data frames, right? So you could use pandas data frame function on market Binance. And if that's more convenient for you, you can just use a data frame, right? So you see the columns are the, uh, the coins now. And you have all the information I just showed you as rows here, right? So precision limits and info is, is another dictionary here. So you will have to find a way to um, yeah, kind of uh, extend that and, and, and add that here as well in a more a readable way. But this is how you get this information here in data frame format. So you can also transpose that, of course, if you want to have the uh, symbols as rows and the information as columns also possible. Just as a, as a side note here for if you want to do some exploration here. Now let's get to a more <laughs> more interesting part. So this is also interesting hopefully, but uh, for me interesting is EG pulling information for other exchanges and do some comparisons to Binance. So first of all general market information, but then price information. And this is the part where it gets very interesting, at least in my opinion. So first of all, I want to pull some market information for another exchange. So for instance, KuCoin here, just doing the exact same thing I did uh, before, and then take KuCoin market and use KuCoin load markets here. And now for instance, we can take a look at uh, how many symbols are traded and which ones. So here you have the overview, which ones are traded. And then uh, you see that there are 1.2K pairs on KuCoin. So roughly half of what you can trade on, on Binance, 
right? And you can all do all the same stuff as I just, let's get rid of this for now. Uh, you can basically do all the same stuff here. So take a look at which USDT assets are traded on KuCoin and so on, right? Just do the same uh, operations as it did. So we see, of course, KuCoin is small and Binance, so less symbols tradable here. But now let's get to the really interesting part, fetching price data. Now let's take Binance and just use fetch ticker for now. You can fetch not only tickers, but open high, low, close data, anything you want. I just, just want to show you some examples. So let's pull the Doge price from Binance. So if you execute that like so, you're getting a lot of information, right? Timestamp, uh, R bit, uh, a lot of other stuff like change, um, volume, and yeah, you can take a look at that for yourself. But interesting for us for now is the last price on Doge on Binance, right? So here last you see, and we can take a look at it like this. So whenever we are calling this, um, you see that this will uh, change here, right? You saw that. So this is the, the live ticker of uh, Doge. And now you could compare that to the live ticker of KuCoin. So fetch ticker, and then you see that these prices could, and I'm very cautious here, could differ here, right? And with that, you could find arbitrage possibilities. So of course you would need to check if those arbitrage possibilities are uh, sufficient enough to cover your, um, your costs but in general, this is a very cool thing because what I would have in mind here is to screen all exchanges, all those exchanges and do a comparison with each other and find the best price of all exchanges and see if you can use this to find profitable opportunities. So. This is a huge project if you want to do it uh, for yourself. But I think this is an interesting one and also a good one for this channel. So if you're interested in that, uh, let's do that together. Um, probably some something like one, two, maybe three part video. So if you're interested in that, let me know. I personally would be quite interested in that. So I will code that anyways, I think. But yeah, that's it for this video. I hope this was an interesting video. Of course, not an investment advice at all. Um, just an introduction for, for educational purposes. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'm looking forward to seeing upcoming videos. Have a good one. Bye bye.